Hey everybody and welcome back to the Heartland Division and HO Scale. In this video I'm going to show you how to take a bare tabletop and turn it into a UP maintenance away facility that you see in front of you. I'll show you how I did some of the lot details like the rail sections and the tie stacks as well as how I did the parking lot that you see the trucks parked on. Also going to show you a couple of the small projects I've been working on and a couple of things that I picked up while I was up at the Springfield Amherst show last month. So stay tuned to find out more. Here's a look at a couple locomotives that I weathered. Uh, this is my RGA Corman GP38. It's an Atlas model and just gave it a nice light weathering job as they like to keep their locomotives pretty clean. And then I also did this CIT MP15. It's a Atlas as well. Did a little bit of roof work. And uh, I think it turned out pretty, pretty good. Here's a quick video of 1530 putting in some work. Pulling out three cars that I picked up at Springfield at the Amherst show. Uh, one being the Coer KCS Bell Patch. That's from Tim Swinton at Maine Model Works. Great job on that car. And the next two are just some Atlas corn syrup tanks that uh, patched from the factory. Good looking paint scheme. So really good additions to the layout. Also went ahead and got one of these Furix MP15s from Atlas. Uh, definitely beautiful model. This one has the ditch lights in the front and the back. So very nice addition to an already awesome model. I think this is my sixth one of these guys. Um, so I might have a slight addiction to them. But regardless, um, this one would be next in line for some weathering. And uh, listen to the startup sequence on this guy. Up at the Springfield Amherst show, um, picked up these JTC containers. Some of the first ones that they came out with, uh, an HO scale. And overall, really good detail. A lot of lettering, decaling. Um, and they look pretty sweet. Also, compare them to my Atherin ones, since I've got like 99% Atherin containers. Uh, they fit together perfectly with no issues and uh, almost probably can't really tell the difference between the two. So definitely be looking to get some more of those in the future. Another project of mine is the uh, Instafame Graffiti. Had those decals made. Um, from a file that I got off of Fiverr. Had somebody kind of put my uh, vision into digital format. Then I sent it over to Fusion Scale Graphics and he printed me off some decals. Also, I want to show you guys my Instagram 25,000 follower giveaway that I'm about to mention here this week. Um, you can see the MT365 tag and then the TSFX reporting marks and uh, car number 25,000. And it just happens to be on a 25,000 gallon tank car. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, you have to be an Instagram follower of my account to enter that giveaway. Um, so 
good luck if you enter. Last thing I want to share with you is this Rapido E8 Amtrak number 290. Picked this one up from Lanco Trains up in Pennsylvania. Uh, great guy to do business with, great prices and shipping, and overall customer service is top notch. So check him out if you get a chance. Uh, I got this one kind of on a budget, just the DC silent version, and threw in a lock pilot non sound decoder as it's paired up with 4316, which came with factory sound. So great consist. Um, right now, I just got to pull in some modern stuff, super liners and view liner baggage cars from Cato. But hopefully down the line, I'll be able to get some aerospecific coaches and uh, have a nice throwback train to run around the layout. So that's about the last thing I want to show you before we get started working on the layout. Uh, so let's go get it. All right, now I'm back over by the east end of the Chicago yard and going to work on the maintenance away facility kind of like a headquarters here where the workers meet up in the office spaces work on trucks and then head out as they're dispatched for jobs for the day as you can see it's adjacent to the locomotive servicing facility which the building's in kind of rough shape since i saved it from a previous diorama so it needs a little tlc to get it back up to par as well as I need to work on getting it put into the layout so that the tracks match up at the right level. I think it's a little bit high right now, so I just need to work on that. Or it's a little bit low, actually. So that's an easier fix than it's sitting too high. So we'll work on that maybe at a future date because I really love the locomotive servicing area and all the details and stuff that go with it. And I've got some Atlas overhead lights that just came out. So I'm looking forward to putting those in. But as you can see, just pretty much a bare tabletop in uh, previous videos. Worked on the scenery behind and the retaining wall and some ballast on the track. So hopefully we can get this moving along and uh, kind of complete out the scene. And as always, the first thing I want to do is move all the stuff out of the way so nothing gets broke. And once the stuff is out of the way, I'm going to mark the buildings just around the foundations. Not super important, but I've moved these buildings around about eight different configurations and this is what I've decided on. We'll get these guys out of the way. That first building was just a pike stuff kit, and then this building here is from Walther's. First step I'm going to do is paint the base layer. I'm just going to use this color that I always use for kind of like concrete for all the bridge piers that I've done and my intermodal pad. And since I have a small portion of that that needs to be painted again, I'm just going to roll this, roll this to make it quick, and then kind of hit two things at once. So I realize I just rolled over my markings for the first building, but we'll kind of keep that in check so we can figure it out where the next one goes. And I also took a minute to kind of scribble some lines where I think I'm going to keep the road. Road that goes over to this industry just to the left here. For the parking lot area, I'm going to use this Arizona Rock and Mineral. Union Pacific gray blend and some driveway in road gravel, kind of like a powder. Uh, they went ahead and did a test area here where I just put it down, threw some water and glue on it mixed, and uh, then sanded it down. So 
So we're just going to try to spread out kind of an even layer and then try to flatten it out the, as best as I can with maybe a straight edge or something so that I don't have to do too much sanding once it's dry. Also got some filthy gray industrial dirt. Throw that down in a few spots. We'll just kind of lightly blend that in. So now we're gonna go ahead and start putting down uh, the glue. And here I'm just gonna do a 50-50 mix of scenic glue and water with a couple drops of soap in there. Get that mixed up and just kind of lightly douse it. More of a mist, I guess, because when the water hits it, it kind of spreads it and clumps it up almost just a little bit. So. And we want to make sure to get good coverage so that this stuff gets hard as it can get. So when we go to sand it, it's not just pulling it off the base. All right, that's pretty well doused. So as you can probably see, there's some bare spots. So what I'll do is just dust over some more of the ballast and then it'll kind of just soak in there and hopefully fill up all those spots. But if they don't, then that's why we painted the base with that color of gray to help hide any of the imperfections. All right, now we're just gonna let that dry for probably overnight. So the parking lot is cured overnight and it's pretty solid with not too much loose ballast just on top. So now we're gonna get to start sanding and I uh, put together just a, a little hasty sanding block with some 400 grit paper. We're gonna go ahead and start with that and uh, see what happens. probably tell it's pretty loud and annoying and I also took away the wood block and was just using my hand pressure um, just felt like it was doing a little bit better job and not leaving as many scratches and you can tell that by sanding it it makes it a lot lighter in color which is the look I'm going for and uh, almost looks like an old concrete parking lot or something like that which is perfect for the look that I want so I'm just gonna keep going making sure that I wipe off every now and then uh, because it really changes the look of it once the loose stuff is off of it I'm gonna vacuum that up just to prevent scratching the smoother surface with the pieces that are loose So here's an overhead view of the parking lot and I went ahead and did some scenery in the back there along the track and added some more mainline ballast and just dirt around it. You can really tell that the joint between the baseboard has cracked so I don't know how I'm going to deal with that yet but it is what it is but overall pretty satisfied with how it's turned out. And now we're going to go move on to finishing the buildings and doing some details for the lot itself. First detail I'm going to work on for the lot is some 39 foot rail sections. So that comes out to be about five and three eighths 
of an inch in human scale. So just roughly mark these old, or not really old, but just scrap pieces of rail that I created while building the main line. Uh, obviously, I'm going to use some safety glasses for this because uh, having some hot pieces of metal into my eyeball is not on my list of things to do this Sunday. So we'll go ahead and get started with the Dremel here. All right, we'll go ahead and repeat that process a few times and then uh, get these things painted up. I'm gonna paint these rail sections. So just using some tape to hold them in place, space them out a little bit so I can get the airbrush in there in between them. And here's some that I've previously painted and the paint is starting to scratch off. So what I'm going to do is take these outside, hit them with some flat varnish, and hopefully that'll help the paint stick to them just a little bit better. Spray paint them, or sorry, then I'll airbrush them with the brown colors, and then hit them with the varnish again and that should help keep them from getting scratched and the paint coming off. So I'm gonna go hit them with the matte varnish and then I'll be back. All right now I'm just gonna spray these with some rust and some earth brown and some orange rust colors. And I also cut up a couple pieces of balsa wood. I'm gonna paint these like they're concrete slab blocks or something that the rails will be sitting on. Once again, just using the tape, fold it over itself to make it like two-sided tape. And that'll help hold these pieces down while I paint them. Kind of makes life a little bit easier. I just want to kind of get a look at what this stacks of rail is going to look like. So I went ahead and brought the stuff over here to the layout and uh, just kind of place these out on the lot, taking them straight off the paint wheel. And in some of the photos I was looking at, you could see like white stripes, blotches of paint on some of the rails. So just took a paint marker, try to simulate that. Here's a little bit better look for you. And I also made like a smaller stack or shorter rails, perhaps just some scrap or some random repairs that need to be done. And we'll just continue with making some stacks like that. The next detail I wanna work on is building sets of new ties to go in the maintenance away lot. This is a set that I did yesterday, it turned out pretty good. And right now I'll show you how I do that. First I'll just take these HO scale ties, just real wood, finely cut ties, work perfect. Put them in an old Tupperware 
and apply just some craft paint. Doesn't really need too much. I'm gonna do straight black and then this one's called pavement, which is a little bit of a gray color. And then add some water. Just so the paint thins out and it can easily cover the ties. Water's in there and now I'm just mixing it all up. Making sure all of the wood gets covered. And it's pretty simple to do. And once you're satisfied, then we'll just start pulling them out. They like to stick together, so just using the brush to get in between all the cracks. That should do it. All right, today I'm wearing gloves because yesterday I had paint pretty much in every fingernail. No, it didn't look very good. Now I've put them on this aluminum foil as they just barely stick to it. And once they're dry, they come right up. And yesterday I stacked them up into some stacks. So I'm just going to arrange them like that again today. Just kind of saves me some time later from having to glue them together because they'll just naturally dry together with the paint and stick. So here's the latest batch of railroad ties and they're just coming right off of the aluminum foil which is good news and we'll just start stacking those up. Put them in our tray to use for later. And then as far as these stacks, comes right up. Easy day. And we're just placing out some of these tie stacks in the area and we'll just set these out for now once we get the trucks in place we can move them however we need to to get the look that we're going for but i would imagine they just in random kind of spots we'll make a bigger pile like that but anyways, we've got tons of ties now pre-made, so we can just use them either on this lot or along the track in other areas. Also got some other detailed parts we can put out and move those around to our liking. Got the signal box, bought a, like a six pack of these off eBay they look 3d printed not too bad looking and pretty cheap details to place along the scenes like this go ahead and add some more details to this scene I'm not gonna glue down the building yet because uh, I think I'm gonna add some lights to it later and the roof is glued on just because the kit didn't go together very well. So, but until then, we're just going to add some details like the Jersey barriers and a truck. Put out a Mountain Dew machine for the workers. And a little recycle bin for now. 
Another Jersey Barrier out in front. Range Rover. And a couple more UP work trucks. Let's see, we can move this guy over here. And we got a forklift. All kinds of stuff we can use. Uh, and none of it has to be glued down, so we can easily move it around when we want to. So that should work for now. I just need to find some downspouts for the Pike Stuff building. But since it's not glued down, that's easy stuff I can do later. Now I'm going to move on to uh, finishing up the maintenance shed. So let's get started on that. I'm just going to airbrush over this Walther's building with some Vallejo model air. Uh, this one's middle stone. We're going to see what that looks like. I've got another option, a yellow-ish color. Uh, we'll start on the back here of the building. So if we don't like it, we can repaint it. And I've got the roof to do too, so I'm going to put a coat of light brown on this and then we'll do some light weathering to age it up a little bit. I'm outside now and I'm going to finish this thing off in between coats with uh, some Montana matte varnish spray. Stuff's really good. Uh, so just give it a light coat and then I'll be able to weather on top of that. Now I'm just finishing up putting this maintenance facility building together. It's going to add the gutters. I already put the doors on there. Uh, I'm going to leave one of the garage doors open. So I just didn't put it on there at all. And that way we'll be able to do some interior details. I'm thinking probably like the arc welder guy that the flashing light makes it look like he's welding so as soon as I can find one of those kits I'll uh, get that installed in there and then a couple garage details I think there's some kits out there that have uh, some good stuff in them just to give a little bit of interest not a big fan of going all out inside of buildings just because uh, the amount of work and time that's involved. But definitely adds a lot of interest to a scene. Alright, so put these gutters on. We'll get those glued in here in a second. I'm sure there's more on the back. We'll just go ahead and add those, even though we won't see them on this layout, but I always just assume one day I'll tear this down and uh, hopefully we reuse all the buildings on a different layout and it might not always be oriented the same way. And just adding these details now will definitely make it easier if that time ever comes. I'm not really a big fan of the light brown roof, so I'm going to spray it with some, like, aluminum spray paint. And we'll just give that a couple light coats and see how that works out. All right, now that I've opted for the aluminum roof, it's a little overpowering. So I just want to dull it up a little bit and I've already hit it with the matte varnish 
But now I'm just going to try some pan pastels. And I'm just going to lightly go over the roof. So I don't want it to be too weathered. I know myself in the past I've weathered buildings too much. Um, just because I thought everything needed to be weathered, you know, a whole bunch. And honestly, it doesn't look very realistic or very good, especially buildings that are well-maintained, which is the case of this one. So I'm just going to keep working these pastels in here. Just some grays. I think is about all I'm going to try. Maybe a little bit of white. Just a little bit of a lighter gray. Just to see what I can do here. Remembering not to get too carried away. And that pretty much finishes it up. I'll just go hit it with the varnish and uh, seal those pastels in there. Here's a look at the diesel shop. I was able to raise it up a little bit, so now the tracks are pretty level going in there. They just need to be glued down. And out the back here, I got three tracks, one that I'm gonna extend to be able to park a locomotive back there. And the other ones I'll just cut off and end them there. Also on the side, going to have to do some concrete or something to fill in that seam that was created from countersinking it into the baseboard. So we'll work on that and then also probably do some concrete pad in between these inspection pits and just uh, start getting the seam put together. So here I'm just going to ballast this siding, kind of like a, it's a maintenance away equipment track. It's going to use some fine, finer ballast. This is N scale ballast. So the, maybe give it a look of ballast has not been replaced in many years and pretty much broke down into some finer stuff. And I'm going to add some powder stuff over it as well. Because this track has been here for a while. So try to cover up some of the ties as well. All right, you just saw me do some quick ground cover work. And we're putting the maintenance shed in place and we can add some details around it as well. Just the truck and maybe a fuel tank. I don't know which way we want it to go, but put it like that. And a fuel truck parked there. We've got our maintenance away bus. Put him in there. Got a truck working or getting worked on inside there. And we got another large truck we can park out in front for now. And you can see, just did a little more groundwork still some stuff I could do as far as blending it in better and putting some dead grass and stuff like that but it's coming along moved in some locomotives pull in the work train here just to set it and then I started with the Walther's modern diesel refueling kit 
just cut out the concrete pads for that and place them inside the track there. And hopefully in my next video, I'll get around to starting the details on that. But you never know what we're gonna work on next. And here's a quick flyby of the overall scene. Coming together pretty good. As you can see, there's still some work to be done. Got some details I can add still. And keep working on the ground cover to make that look more realistic. As well as install the lights and stuff like that. But uh, definitely a big improvement from where we started. So make sure to check back on the YouTube channel and follow my Instagram or Facebook uh, for more updates as I get things moving along. So I appreciate you guys, as always, for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.